Thank you, Jude. That was, that was a great introduction. Thank you very much. She's not that old, you know. Well, the title tonight is uh, Vesuvius, a classic volcano. This is an image of Vesuvius as it is today. And you can see that it's a hole in the ground. And really, that's what volcanoes are. Volcanoes are holes through which really hot material reaches the surface of the Earth. It's very hard to find a better definition than that. They come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, this one happens to be conical, but you can actually get just great big holes formed as a function of the eruption of really hot fluids. And our Lake Taupo is an example of a caldera, uh, which has been formed by multiple eruptions uh, from highly explosive volcanism. If I go on, this is another view of Vesuvius. And you can see it is a beautiful, interesting cone in the middle of a larger structure. And in behind Vesuvius, the actual cone, you can see a ridge. And that is the edge of a, a much larger volcanic structure. We can call it a caldera. Uh, and that relates to an older stage of the history of Vesuvius. And in fact, that is known as Soma, S-O-M-M-A, Soma. So Vesuvius is just the modern day cone inside one of these, uh, inside a bigger volcanic structure. Now, before we start in earnest, uh, I want to explain why I've chosen to speak here on this occasion. I'm not necessarily an authority on Vesuvius, but I have an abiding interest in the Duke of Hamilton, <laughs> this man here. <laughs> and the reason is that the Duke of Hamilton was the, the British ambassador to the court of Sicily, based in Naples, in the late 1700s. And he was in a really interesting position. He was an older man, and he was perforce. He was required to be with the king of Sicily pretty much at all times, whose only real pastime was hunting. And the Duke was not that interested in hunting. He got bored with it. <laughs> and so he became, uh, he excused himself, shall we say, from the king and said, look, I've got urgent business up Mount Vesuvius. And so it was that the Duke of uh, Hamilton became a, a very significant uh, student of Vesuvius. And one of the finest books in the late 1700s was actually written by this man, uh, beautifully illustrated, relating to uh, this particular volcano. He's a very interesting man for another reason. Uh, he happened to be in this particular court the king of Sicily was King Ferdinand and his wife, Queen Maria Carolina. She was, uh, happened to be a sister of Ma Marie Antoinette of France. Uh, and of course, being a nobleman and an ambassador, he was pretty much at their whim. But he was married to this much younger woman, Emma, the Duchess of Hamilton. And she's very famous because she's been regarded as the most painted woman ever. This predates, late 1700s predates photography by about 50 years, uh, but she was painted. And if you go to London, to the Portrait Gallery, or just about any noble house in Europe, you will find an image of this woman. <laughs> she was that famous. Uh, made more famous because she ended up in a curious threesome the Duke, who was much older, and Lord Nelson. And uh, when Napoleon invaded Italy in the late 1700s, late 1790s, and swept down Italy, uh, the court of Sicily decided to move. And they moved from Naples to Palermo in Sicily. And who to move them but none other than the gallant Lord Nelson. Uh, I dare say he wasn't a lord at that time, but he's immensely famous. He was a hero. And he moved the entire court, a huge retinue, all their furniture, all their belongings, uh, a very famous occasion. When they got to Sicily, where to live? 
Well, the three of them lived together in a house, and uh, after a while, Nelson was recalled to Britain, and they ended up living in a house together in London. Now, there's a, a hill. I specialize in rocks and fossils between 300 and 150 million years old, and the biggest hill you pass on your way from Gore to Tianao is on your left, and it's Mount Hamilton. And those are Triassic rocks. You can find Triassic fossils on the very top of Mount Hamilton, and it's named after Emma. How about that? So much for my introduction. That's why I wanted to give this talk. <laughs> We're going to briefly cover, in the next half hour, uh, the big picture. We're going to talk about the context in which Vesuvius exists within the Aeolian arc, the eruption, what actually happened during the eruption of 79 AD, a brief history of Vesuvius, uh, some comments on the similarity with New Zealand, and then something about its overall significance. So let's hope we can accomplish all that. I, I'm not one for writing down my talks, so uh, uh, that's why I'm not looking at notes. But um, it makes it difficult for my colleagues over here who are trying to translate for people who have impaired hearing. All right, here we are. This is a, uh, a map showing the plate configuration. Remember, the Earth's crust is made up of about 15 large plates. And uh, note Europe over here. I don't know if you can see the red pointer. Here's the Eurasian plate. And this is the African plate. Italy's in here. And essentially, Africa is moving northwards with respect to the Eurasian plate. And that's, that's creating the situation uh, that is giving rise to volcanism in the Mediterranean. Uh, while we're here, we've just had the earthquake in Haiti. Note this is the Caribbean plate, and it's the Caribbean plate that is moving to the east with respect to the North American plate that uh, is the problem on the particular fault systems running through Haiti. By the way, the African plate is moving north with respect to the Eurasian plate at about the rate of two to three centimeters a year. This is well established from direct measurement using satellite and laser technology. That's about half the rate that things are happening here in New Zealand. So New Zealand straddles a plate boundary and uh, the Pacific plate is moving with respect to the Australian plate at about four to five centimeters a year. So the rate of collision is much less in Europe than it is here. This is just a map of Europe just to give you uh, another a closer view of where we're talking about. Here's Italy and uh, Palermo, uh, sorry, Sicily, Sicily's here and Naples is just in here. Vesuvius is uh, immediately behind the city of Naples. This is a, a, a sketch map really, just a diagram. Uh, would be better if it was colored, but it isn't. It shows the outline of southern Italy shows Sicily and it shows the a line here with teeth on it and that line denotes the collision between the African plate to the uh, to the east and the Eurasian plate to the west so and the direction of the teeth indicate the direction of subduction so in other words the crust on this side is going down under the crust on this side. And it's that process that we're so familiar with here in New Zealand with respect to our North Island that is giving rise to uh, all the volcanic uh, rocks in this region. By far the most active and, most, and biggest volcano is actually Etna, located here. But there are a string of islands in the South Tyranian Sea here, known as the Aeolian Islands, and or e every one of them is uh, a volcano. There are very few that are active, I have hasten to say.